Okay, we've done a test and the test came out good, so we're going to go for it. Welcome. It's me, JD, live and direct from wherever the green screen background I decided to choose while I was editing this shows me. But really, I'm here in the lovely Orsini Studios in beautiful Los Angeles, California, speaking to you on a Saturday night. All 28 subscribers, maybe there'll be more at this point, but it's so good to see you if you are watching. Thank you for joining me. This is exciting. It's live, live and direct. No editing, no boo-boo-boo. Just us talking. I'm just getting down to it. I was going to do another Wrong Answers Only episode, but I'm working on all these projects, all these new and exciting things, and I'm going to show a little preview, hopefully, at the end of this one. I sort of cobble it together with some edits and such. But, uh, but yeah, lots of stuff, lots of things going on. I hope everyone is well who is watching this. I know that the, uh, the uh, craziness of life has been uh, kicking up into high gear. I read today that there are now uh, murder bees attacking the uh, the North American colonies. Uh, so on top of everything else, but we're out here, we're doing our best, and I wanted to kind of come and just do a kind of a shoot from the hip, no real notes, just kind of talk about what's been going on with me, how I've been doing. I can't really find out how you've been doing, but hopefully in the comments you can like and subscribe and keep up with me. But it's just been a lot of uh, a lot of quarantine, <laughs> a lot of activity inside the home. Uh, I've been making episodes of support. Uh, I have been making episodes of wrong answers only, and I've been working on a new project, a new mysterious project that uh, should be coming out soon this summer. So look for it this summer, Burr. Um, and so it's cool. But I wanted to kind of sort of break down, you know, how I'm feeling about things. Get into some real kind of you know, stuff, because uh, there's been a lot going on, some positive things, some good things that I have been sort of up to, uh, the, uh, the movies have been, uh, rampant now that we are all inside, and I've been watching a lot of them, one I could really recommend with true honesty and grit is Knives Out, Ryan Johnson's Knives Out, very, very good movie, I did not like his Star Wars burr, but I very much liked Knives Out, it is a murder mystery, banana, and it uh, and it's really fun. You know, it's one of these things where you see it, and you say, I saw the trailer, and I was like, yeah, this is like a little Agatha Christie, blah, 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 But it's actually very, very entertaining, very exciting, very funny, um, great acting, uh, great performances. Daniel Craig, never heard of him. Uh, yeah, great stuff. I highly recommend Knives Out. That is the only one I could really recommend. I have not seen Tiger King. I am the one. I, uh, I've heard of it. I've heard people talk about it. There's all the, uh, all the memes. Uh, I'll never financially recover from this. <laughs> it's probably my favorite. I did see that scene, but uh, I have not seen any of the Tiger King, so I cannot recommend that. The ESPN documentary on Michael Jordan is excellent. It's on the Bulls, but it mainly focuses on Michael Jordan. <clears throat> Pardon me, not quarantined. Um... But yeah, it's a really, really exciting thing. One of the things I really, really like about it is that it sort of shows from a future standpoint what it was like to sort of deal with kind of being a son of a bitch a little bit. Like, it's interesting because Michael Jordan kind of takes on this this role, and everybody else agrees, of like the super champion. And the thing that made him a super champion is he was unrelenting. He was uncompromising. He pushed himself past everybody else. Like Everybody was the best. And he pushed himself past that. And he was talented. And he worked hard. And everybody, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, if you work hard, you can do anything. But what does work hard mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I do 12 hours and he does 10 hours, did I work harder than him? Uh, I don't know. If he got more done than me, what, what does it matter with time? And so, like, working hard is kind of one of these concepts that, like, for me, until you actually, I feel like you work hard, You, I, I had a hard time understanding what work hard is. Like, do I just sit there for six hours and go like, I was here, it, it worked, or it didn't work, and I worked. But like, what is actually working hard? And one of the things that I think it sort of breaks down and shows that I think is is kind of mind-opening, and for me, it's kind of crystallized, it, 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 it's, a, it's a willingness. It's a willingness to do it. So, 
It's just the idea that a champion is willing to do that extra thing in order to get something done. It's like you can tell, you know, everybody's going to shoot a hundred baskets. Everybody's going to, you know, write a thousand pages. Everybody's going to put in a certain amount of work in order to become a champion in whatever they do. And when you say like work hard, you got to work hard. If you don't work hard, like sacrifice, like what are these things? Like grinding, what are these things? And it's willingness. It's a willingness to say, if this has got to get done, I'm going to get it done no matter what. That will to say like, my knee is hurt. And if there's a 2% chance I could be a champion with that hurt knee, I'm going to be a champion. I'm going to choose this other thing. We're down this many games. I choose to be a champion. We lose this many times and I'm still going to come back. I'm choosing to do that. It's a willingness to do it. I'm willing to go through the pain and the emotional furbity fur. And I'm going to put that aside in order to be a champion because I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to push myself past these things because, you know, you have to want to do it. You have to want to be a champion, right? And that really shows that, that it is a willingness. Because everybody's going to shoot 1,000 baskets, everybody's going to miss, everybody's going to, you know, make it. But if you're willing to go further in your mind and in your vigor, that willingness transcends into success a lot of times. And it shows in that. Because everybody else is like, I just wasn't willing to work that hard. I wasn't willing to spend that much time in the gym. I wasn't willing to sacrifice my body for this. I wasn't willing to do this thing. And Jordan was always willing to do that. And it makes me, you know, it inspires me because I want to be able, you know, because everybody works hard and everybody, everybody puts in the time or, you know, people at, at a certain level all put in the time. But what makes the champion? And it's willingness for all, you know, I'm willing to keep going. I'm willing to to, to get through this quarantine and five years from now when stand-up comedy comes back, he... <laughs> I'm willing to kind of wait. You know, I'm willing to work through this time and I'm willing to say to myself, this is all part of some great plan to, to make things better, to, to establish a world where things are better. And my willingness to, to believe in that, my willingness to, to not get down and my willingness to keep pushing makes me feel champion-like. And it's not a ring and it's not, you know, a mansion with a pool yet, but it has that sort of, that weight. Because nowadays it's really difficult to deal mentally. You know, because we're quarantined. If you're not sick, you're fine. But you'll lose your mind in this house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Working from home and living at home and not being able to go out and not being able to see people and not being able to... And then it's like, stand six feet apart and there's lines at the supermarket. Like, for me, I was like, that's the stuff that bothers me. Like, I mean, I'm worried about the corona passively. I mean, my mother had it. And thank goodness that she survived and everything was good. But she said it's bad. It's a bad, bad thing. But the thing that's eating at me right now and every day is that stuff. Waiting in line, wearing a mask not being able to talk to people, interact with people. That's the stuff that's killing me. And I feel like that, in a small way, that documentary or seeing somebody champion through this adversity makes me feel that same thing, you know, champion through. You know, you, one of the things that it recognizes that, you know, you hear about Michael Jordan, he's a champion all the time. Dude, it took like six years for him to become a champion. He was, he was getting his butt whipped by the same team. And so I look at that and how it's like you persevere, a willingness a willingness to keep going. And that's kind of where I'm at. Using that sort of inspiration to will myself to keep putting out content, to keep doing things, to keep myself in a positive mind frame. Because I believe that this is going to pass. I think it's going to take a long time. <laughs> I think this idea of like, oh yeah, we'll all be hanging out this summer is not going to happen. I think uh, RIP, comedy clubs for a while, RIP, movie theaters for a while. R.I.P. and music festivals, you know, rip concerts, rip all that stuff. No one's going to drink at a bar with plexiglass. It ain't going to happen, right? What we have to do is just mentally prepare and persevere. And the best way to do that is to realize we're still alive. We still have time. We still have resources. We still have our minds and abilities. And we could do anything with that, literally anything. And I think if we all kind of keep that good mental attitude and don't feel this like we're being locked down or feel like we're being stifled or feel like this thing is going to take us over 
You know, this is just, this is just time. This is just time being spanned for the next thing. A regrowth and a rebirth is happening. I know it's going to happen. And I believe in that because I've seen enough people. If we're this mad, <laughs> if we're this mad that we have to be inside all the time because we can't see one another, that means we really, really care. It means we really, really care. Because we have all the resources to stay inside and never see each other again. And we're so mad that we can't go out. Because <laughs> we want to see each other. We want to interact. We want to be. And I think we need to get over certain things and move past certain things. But I think more than anything else, we need to keep strong mental fortitude. And belief. Belief that things are going to get better. Belief that this is all happening for our benefit. Things are happening for us, not to us. And I truly believe that. And it's helped me. That and being creative, you know, also interacting with comedians, you know, who shout out to all the comedians who helped with support. You know, I wrote these scripts and sent them out to the comedians and then they came and, you know, sent me back the audio and we were able to put this together and they feel better and I feel better. And that's that community, that creative community, you know, people online singing songs to one other people. You know, I, I got a friend who's an accountant who's playing guitar online. You know what I mean? Like people are, are releasing themselves in a certain way. And I think that that's to our benefit. And that is very, very good. And I think we need to keep more of that. We need to keep more of that and not worry about these masks and these lines and these don't touch people. It's six feet apart, bro. Don't worry about that. Allow that to just pass and use this time to be creative and to learn and to grow. At least that's what I tell myself every morning. <laughs> and I hope you do the same. Um, and that's kind of pretty much it, you know. Go see Knives Out and keep a positive mental attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and the Michael Jordan documentary. Amazing. But no, honestly, really, this that was one of the things. I kind of wanted to just get a shout out to everybody saying thank you for all the love and support. As you watch these, I hope you are enjoying and I hope you're staying safe. But also, I hope you're keeping that positive mental attitude. And know that it is extremely important. It is of the utmost importance to keep that positive mental attitude. Because it's going to get us through. It's going to keep us going. It's just going to make the world better. Seriously, make the world better. Because the world's different. It ain't what it was. Ain't what it was. And so now we need to grow and learn. And I think this is an important part about it. And I have so many jokes I can't wait to tell. And why are kids so annoying? But <laughs> they're everywhere. But honestly, you know, why do Mexicans sound like Hispanic Bob Dylan? There's so many jokes I want to tell. But we're going to get there. We're going to get to that point. But for now, all we have to do is just persevere. Persevere. Keep a positive, good mental attitude. And flex positive. And, uh, and thank you. If you've made it this far into the rant, blog, vlog, whammy, I hope there's something cool in the background for everyone to enjoy while this was going on. My name is Jason Delgado. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And I made that up right now. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, have a good one. See you on the next one.